Yeah, thanks, Liam. Hi, I'm Anna Crouch. I'm the Director of Admission, and uh, I'm so glad you're all with us this morning or night, wherever you are right now. Uh, we recognize that we have a lot of parents and students who are joining us from all over the country and world. Um, today was actually supposed to be our first revisit day on campus. I was thinking about that earlier. So um, in many ways, I'm so glad that we're still all able to be here together. Um, we know that this is a busy time for you. And so we appreciate you taking this time out of your your day uh, to spend with us and to, to get to know Mercersburg Academy a little bit better. So tonight, uh, we're talking about academics right now in this webinar, and then um, 45 minutes later, uh, for the next 45 minute chunk, we'll be talking about college counseling and uh, after Mercersburg. So if you're not joining us for that, there's still time to register and, and you can um, hear both. So um, just just some some words of advice and for our and reminders for our participants here. Um, you'll be able to ask questions using the Q&A button. Uh, might be at the bottom. Um, and, and we'll see all your questions as they come in and, and we'll address them as best as we can. We may not go in order, um, but we will, we will see them and, and we'll get to them. Um, and know that you, you'll be on mute and you, know, you won't be able to see us, but, or you won't be able to see yourself, but you'll be able to see us. Um, in the top right hand corner of your screen, you can change it, change the view to gallery view or speaker view, um, full screen or not. So just um, you can familiarize yourself with Zoom as we're all doing these days. Um, so with, without further ado, uh, I'd love to turn it over to our, our panelists here and um, I'll let them introduce themselves and uh, then we'll just get going with questions and answers. All right, um, Julie, do you want to do so? Well, on the call, we have on the webinar, we have Julie Maurer here and John David Bennett and Margaret Machula. As you can see, um, their titles underneath, they live and breathe uh, school life here and academics, so they can answer anything that's on your mind. Um, Jack Katari is also on the call and uh, Greta, Greta Lawler will likely be joining us anytime now. So Greta is a new ninth grader and Jack is uh, a senior this year. Hard to believe. So um, yeah, so let's see here. We will just jump in and um, I see Hey, uh, let me see here. Anna, do you want us to introduce ourselves, what we do? Yeah, yes, please. Okay. Um, I'm Julie Maurer. I'm the Associate Head of School for School Life and Math and Robotics teacher at Murchisburg. I've been here for 19 years on the faculty. I'm also an alum from the class of 1990, and I am a current parent, three students, and one alum. So I've got a lot of different hats at Murchisburg and happy to answer questions about anything academics related, um, anything from parents, anything about the robotics program. Thanks. I'm John David Bennett. Uh, I am the Dean of Curricular Innovation. I'm also a longtime English teacher here, 13 years. I have two children who graduated from the academy and a ninth grader here. I'm also the director of Springboard and uh, administrator who oversees all interdisciplinary programs. So I can answer your questions about maps and Springboard tonight. Hi everyone, I'm Margaret Machula. I am the director of learning services and I also coach girls JV soccer. I, like Julie, have children who are currently attending Mercersburg. I have one graduate who is home from college, so that's pretty exciting for me. And I have um, an eighth grader as well. So um, as Director of Learning Services, I offer support to all students in a variety of ways, um, from just offering one-to-one -one sessions, learning about time management study skills, from um, looking at educational testing and talking about accommodations at the school, um, setting students up with tutoring and one-to-one -one support in that way, 
Um, so I'm happy to field questions in terms of all of the um, opportunities you have to get support academically. Hi, I'm Jack Atari. Um, I've been at Mercersburg for four years now, hard to believe. Uh, I'm a prefect in Maine Hall. Uh, I'm vice president of the senior class. I volunteer in the help centers. I swim and play lacrosse and uh, I'm involved with the green team. So I'm, I'm looking forward to answering some questions. Hi, I'm Greta Lawler. I'm a ninth grader here at Mercersburg. I come from Arlington, Virginia. And I'm a blue key. I, I run cross country, track and field, and I play squash. And I'm happy to answer any questions about transition or just your future at Mercersburg. Great, thanks everyone. Well, um, the, first, the first question that, that came through, uh, which is a great one and one that we get often, uh, Dr. Mauer, I'll, uh, I'll let you answer it, is um, it's on top of mind for a lot of our accepted students. How do we decide what courses they're going to take based on all the classes that they have taken in middle school or in high school already? Um, if you could touch, if you could speak to that, that'd be great. Yeah, sure, absolutely. We get that question a lot um, at revisit days. So uh, for the students that are coming out of middle school, so maybe you are um, looking at being here in your ninth or 10th grade year, uh, what we'll do is we will take a look at your transcript uh, that you sent us and um, you'll have some choice in some of your classes and then in others it, it's pretty straightforward. So every, every ninth grader takes our English class and our um, ninth grade history class. So that's pretty easy, uh, but you'll have lots of choice in terms of your fine arts requirements. You'll be able to pick from two different areas in the fine arts and take those classes and we have a wide variety of options for you there. Um, classes in theater, music, band, chorale, dance, acting, um, stage combat, all kinds of things you could choose. You can pick two of those and then we'll look at your, um, if you've had some foreign language in the past, if you've studied Spanish or um, Chinese or French or German or Latin, we'll have you take a placement test. And that'll help us be able to match up where your level uh, ability-wise fits our curriculum. And um, so we'll do that and we encourage students to take the placement test right after they, um, as you're prepping for your final exams, we do the same thing in math. And so we'll look at your transcript and if it's anything beyond algebra one that it looks like you've already covered, um, then we'll have you do the placement test. So if you've had algebra one or anything past that, you'll do a placement test for us. And then we'll match your math ability with the best you know, possible class for you here at Mercersburg and give you some options there. And then um, almost all of our ninth graders take biology and you've got a choice of two different biologies, micro um, or macro or molecular biology. And so um, if you've already had a high school level biology class, then most students choose to go on into chemistry. So it's pretty, it's a, it's, um, we'll, we'll work with you and your transcript and try to get the best fit for you in terms of classes. Thanks, Julie. Yep. Um, John David, there's been a question about independent study programs at Mercersburg, um, as well as, um, let's say I want to take a class that's, you know, perhaps not, an, not offered if, if, if that's available to students. Um, also, you know, as students come from a lot of different backgrounds, maybe they've had the IB program where they're coming from or AP classes before, how does, how does that all translate to our curriculum? So um, I guess first addressing independent study classes, uh, those opportunities, and then students coming from different backgrounds. Well, the independent study uh, classes you can take with individual teachers. Uh, you approach the teacher with, uh, with, with your topic, what it is that you would like to study, and then the, the, uh, the, 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 your course of study becomes independent with them essentially operating as an advisor. So whatever the topic would happen to be. Um, so that could range from, from scientific to literary. Uh, now, as far as if you are in, in, in a, if, if you're in an IB program or AP, you may know that we are in a transition away from advanced placement. Uh, we made that decision in order to create some flexibility for our teachers, flexibility within the, uh, the curriculum. Dr. Maurer and I are each AP teachers. 
uh, long time AP teachers. And I think despite the fact that we enjoy teaching AP classes, we've each for a long time recognized what it was we'd be able to do if we could drop the designation, if we didn't lose all of May because, because the kids were taking the exam or most of April because we were preparing them for it. And so we're eager next year to get those, to get those months back and imagine the, uh, the sort of, um, the project-based work that we can do, the, the sort of uh, longitudinal research that we could do in a science class, or the, uh, uh, so for, for example, we have students now who I think could uh, be doing what the sort of work that you see in our interdisciplinary programs in their uh, core classes a lot earlier because of the fact that we're moving away from advanced placement. Uh, we will though still have classes that will prepare you for the exams and uh, some of the classes, though, that were formerly AP will not directly prepare you for the exams. But the experience in, the, in those courses will be incredibly dynamic. Uh, for example, we have a course that's going to go up next year that we're calling uh, Environmental Science 17236, 17236 being our zip code. It's going to be uh, led by a teacher named Will Willis, who is going to try to make it as much as a field experience course as possible. Great, thanks so much, John David. Um, this is, is a, a question that probably Jack could answer. Um, could you talk to us a little bit, Jack, about um, maps and, and springboard? For those of you uh, who are joining us, you've probably heard about Mercersburg's capstone senior uh, courses called springboard, which John David or anyone can speak a little bit more about. Um, but, but Jack, maybe you could just give us a an introduction to MAPS and Springboard. Yeah, so um, MAPS and Springboard, the two capstone experiences that um, hired like uh, upperclassmen students at Mercersburg experience. <clears throat> uh, so Springboard is just senior year. So um, in, if you're a senior and you haven't elected to be in the MAPS program, then you have a slew of uh, different uh, Springboards that you can take uh, that range from all different interests and they're really um, things that you dive deep into um, with teachers and you can kind of take on your own projects and have that independent study uh, almost. And then um, the MAPS program is what I'm in. That's a two-year program where in your 11th grade year you uh, talk about current events, you talk about philosophy and ethics, and then you kind of focus on one topic and you do a lot of independent research and then you that all culminates in a thesis paper which is defended in the spring of your senior year and that's what i'm in the midst of right now but yeah that's the maps hey, and Jack, what's your program. topic can you share your topic with everyone yeah so uh i'm talking oh i'm doing research and writing about the intersection between social media and politics right now and how the political landscape is changing uh online so yeah, that's been a lot of fun. It's very topical, uh, ever changing, especially in the past few months. Um, so uh, it's been really rewarding for me. It's taught me a lot about um, research in general, but also kind of what I think I wanna do in the future. Um, and that's kind of what Springboard and uh, Maps are all about. They kind of allow you to dabble in a lot of things, but also focus in on um, things that you really enjoy. John David, do you want to tell us a little bit more about some specific springboard classes that are available? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, I think oftentimes people think of MAPS as sort of the honors interdisciplinary capstone. And there, perhaps there are some elements of that. It is an application only uh, program. Students apply at the end, in, in the end of 10th grade and they go through two years of, uh, of, of preparation for that final project. But uh, there are things that can happen in maps that can't happen in Springboard, and there are things that can happen in Springboard that can't happen in maps. And in fact, for the last uh, three years, the valedictorian and the salutatorian have actually come out of Springboard. And they've chosen to take Springboard because of the sort of projects that they could do. For example, one of them uh, became a, sort of a, a fledgling expert in machine learning, was able to design a, a machine that could uh, that could read hazardous material signs, whether they are obscured or blurred or upside down. And it was incredibly accurate by the end of the year. And then when he was finished with that project, he came to me and asked if we'd be able to support 
his attempt to try to control a robot that he had built with his brain. Uh, so yes, yeah, so he was, he was, uh, he, the students walking around the halls of, uh, of, uh, of the academic buildings in the last couple of months of school with small little parts of his, of his hair missing, you know, shaven because he had been connecting sensors to his head and was actually teaching a machine how to read his brain waves. And on the last, on, on the night of presentations, we got to watch him one, turn a light on with his brain and then make his robot move forward and backwards. And that's something that wouldn't necessarily uh, work in maps. Uh, but anyway, topic, uh, the, 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 courses, the course offerings for next year are uh, Maker's Lab, Commercial Arts, fight, The Fight Against Disease, uh, Rapid Application Development, a course that we call Parallel Histories, which I can explain, Write Your Novel, which is exactly what it sounds like, Activism, a course called Scriptorium, which is actually the translation of, um, of archaic texts that, I mean, it's a very academic course. It's, it's, it's making a contribution to academe. A new course called Mercersburg Radio. We are bringing back our radio station. And uh, a course called Food for Thought, which is uh, about, it's, uh, it's, it's essentially the sort of experience that, that you would see on the Food Network. It's, it's, it's food writing, it's food experience, it's, and so on, and then positive psychology. Uh, I teach two of the springboard classes, Parallel Histories and Write Your Novel. And uh, you know, for example, we had a student last year who produced a 63,000 word novel in just seven months. And it's really fantastic work. And Parallel Histories is of course actually in Mercersburg history, but I'm not teaching Mercersburg history. The students are taking stories, the sketches of stories from the incredibly storied uh, uh, history of our school, all 126 years. For example, we have a student this year who noticed uh, that there were four pairs of shared last names in our World War I memorial plaque. It's the, it lists the 55 Mercersburg graduates who died in the First World War. And she has managed to dig in deeply into the lives of these men and has contacted family who, has pr who provided her with photographs, with, uh, uh, in fact, she, she, uh, she, she was able to get the last three letters written home by, by one of these men. Uh, and when she does her presentation, hopefully on the 15th of April, it's going to be a tear-jerking night. It's uh, the stories that she's going to tell due to her research are just unbelievable. Um, it is not high school level work. This is the sort of thing you would expect to see five years from now. Um, and and uh, I'm proud to say that in that class, that my contribution to her work is relatively minimal. It, that doesn't mean that I am not helping when she needs help. But this is almost completely student driven. If you were to ask me now to, to, to give you the details about Caroline's project, I would point you in her direction. She would be able to tell you a great deal more about what she's doing than I can. And that's, and that's the spirit of Springboard. Uh, it is, it is uh, you know, the, the, the students have a sort of um, umbrella topic, but they're able to take that in whatever direction they would like. And the work has been amazing, absolutely amazing. Hey, uh, Anna, if you'd like me, I have a video of um, Victor moving the robot with his brain. <laughs> you want me to share that with everybody? And if uh, we've got a ton of questions, actually. So if, if we have time at the end, I'd love for you to share that, Julie. Yeah, I actually have a video if you'd like us to, uh, if you'd like me to share it with the participants. But. Okay. Well, actually, Julie, we have a number of questions uh, that are, that are uh, about the AP program and moving away from the AP designation. So I wonder if you can, can share a little bit more uh, with the participants about um, what it will mean for them if they've already taken AP class, if they were hoping to come here um, and, and take an AP class, will they still be able to get AP credit? Um, if you if you could just elaborate a little bit more on our decision to to move beyond the AP and and kind of what next year and this year look like for students who are interested in AP. Sure, absolutely. Um, and John David can chime in too. We did uh, two years of pretty intense research uh, before making this decision, and John David was the one that spearheaded that group uh, doing the research. But I'll I'll talk about I am an AP teacher. I've been teaching AP six sticks since two thousand and four, so uh, two thousand and three. So for a long time, um, and have you know the students and my students have done really well on the exam. But it is limiting to be tied to that curriculum. 
uh, we, we don't have the time for the kinds of projects that I would like to do in the class. And because we are associated with the college board, we have to cover the curriculum that, that they dictate that we have to teach. And so, um, you know, in terms of what we're gonna be able to do, what I'll be able to do with my students and the kind of projects and um, project-based and experiential work we'll be able to do in the class and not have to focus so much on the exam and the exam prep and all of those topics. It really just gives us a lot more space to do the kind of really interesting work, um, you know, that, we're, that we can do. Uh, in terms of next year, you know, it's, it's a fortunate year to be teach. I always love teaching statistics in, um, in an election year, and that's what we're going to be in this next year. And so I'm totally switching the way that I'm going to approach the class in the fall and teach it um, with the election as kind of the primary focus in that class. And we'll start with sampling and really, um, you know, look at um, that in depth, you know, the polling and the sampling and what that's telling us and the predictive power. I think it's, it's going to be a much more interesting class for students, actually. And to not have the pressure of all the test prep uh, piece of it is going to be nice. Now, if a student would like to sit for the exam, I'll make sure that they can, you know, they'll still be able to take those exams on our campus and we can make sure that they're ready to do that. Um, it may be that a lot of students, I teach a lot of seniors, my class is almost always entirely seniors. And by the time that they are getting ready for the exam in May, they've already found out that their college doesn't give them credit or, you know, it's just not something that they think is going to be that helpful for them. And at our school, if you're in an AP class, uh, you take the exam right now, that's just our policy. And so this is just gonna give us more flexibility um, to do what we really love to do with the kids in class. Um, I, I also teach robotics um, and the, I can just see the, the difference in terms of the, the way that you can work with students in that kind of project oriented class is just is so freeing and so exciting. Um, so uh, I'm excited about the transition and I think it's gonna give uh, students a, a lot of a lot more options. So I, I don't know if John David has more to weigh in on that, but and then I think Jack wanted to say something too, from the student point of view. Yeah, just one little anecdote about moving away from AP. So I'm a Latin lover, and uh, I took AP Latin last year. And although it was a great class, and I loved it, Mr. Thorne, one of the best teachers I've ever had, um, it was very much on point with the curriculum. Um, and then moving away from that into post AP Latin this year, we've been able to dive deep into things that we never would have had to been able to do before. Uh, for example, we actually are translating um, a never before translated manuscript. Um, we were able to work with Dickinson College and get a manuscript that's never been translated. And we had been diving deep into that, learning about the a physician's ideas about the human body from the 14th century. And that's just been one example of how moving away from the AP and kind of having that flexibility that Dr. Mao was talking about can be really enriching in the classroom. You know, the prevailing research suggests that if students feel that they are gaining competence, if they feel like they're related to the work that they're doing, and they feel like they have autonomy, that we'll see them carry their learning further and the learning will go deeper. And that's what moving away from advanced placements or moving beyond advanced placements can allow us to do. Um, it's gonna allow us to put the student in the driver's seat and the teacher's role to become, to, to shift. Uh, so we're not necessarily the ones who are providing all of the content information. That doesn't mean the kids aren't learning boatloads of content. It'll just be, uh, it'll just be learned differently. Uh, the students will, will uh, perhaps often be choosing which, uh, which, which pathway of content that they would like to learn and whatever, and whatever the course may be. And uh, we are fairly quickly transitioning in that direction. Great, thank you. Uh, I wanna pivot a little bit here and um, ask Margaret a question and, and maybe Greta can chime in on this as well too. Uh, Margaret, can you share with us and the participants uh the support structures that we have in place here at mercersburg whether you're a new ninth grader or um you know an 11th grader who all of a sudden is is preparing for for college sure my, my pleasure anna um so at mercersburg we have a variety of uh, support systems in place 
First and foremost, every student will have an advisor and that's a small group of about eight to nine students with one faculty member um, who is going to act like a parent away from home. So the student can always go to that faculty member, that person um, in confidence and um, share any you know, challenges or obstacles or successes. Um, so that's one level of support. And oftentimes the advisor might reach out to me or to a teacher or to Mrs. Smith, our academic dean, if there's a concern that they think that we can address more specifically. Um, so the advisor is a really great support system. Our teachers, our faculty are incredibly supportive. We have a help period after lunch for 30 minutes, at least three times a week where students can meet with their teachers and um, get extra help in their classes. And oftentimes teachers will make themselves available outside of class as well. Um, you know, I'm in my office uh, Monday through Friday during the school day and I meet with students one to one so that I can really assess specific concerns, specific issues and really help students brainstorm different strategies, ways to study, how to study, where to study, maybe time management skills. Um, you know, so I really allow them to work through some of their difficulties and point them in you know, the direction of other support systems and resources that we have on campus. We have three resource centers that are open every evening, um, four nights a week, from about 7.15 until 9.15, 9.30. So we have a language media center for our foreign languages. We have a math and science center, and we have a writing center that's staffed by a faculty member and four or five students on each night. Um, and these students have been, you know, they go through an application process to make sure that they are well versed in the content, but also are going to be really good at um, peer tutoring. And then if students um, need it, we also offer tutoring in some subject areas. So if they really feel like they need more one to one instruction that's available for an added fee. Um, for our incoming ninth graders, we have a study hall that runs from eight o'clock until 930 four nights a week, Monday through Thursday. That's in small groups. So there's one faculty member to about 12 ninth graders. Um, it is separated by dorms. So the boys are on one side of the hall and the girls are on the other side of the hall. Um, and we really do a more of a hands-on approach where we're walking around checking our LMS, making sure that students are checking the LMS, they know what their homework is, are they completing it and submitting it. And that runs, I wanna say through the winter term. We also have a similar study hall for our incoming 10th graders for the first six weeks. And then following that, we um, use that space as our supervised study hall that is open to all students um, of all grades who want to come in for a more structured study environment. And um, in addition to that, students um, in the 10th, 11th, and 12th grade are also free to um, use our library and some of the other buildings on campus um, in the evening. As soon as they check into their dorm, they're allowed to check out and, and access those other resources. Great, thank you. Uh, Greta, can you talk to us a little bit about what it's been like coming from um, eighth grade into, into Mercersburg and just the help centers or, or the resources that you've used at Mercersburg, uh, perhaps also what study hall has been been like for you too. Yes, definitely. Um, I think that like coming into Mercersburg from middle school, I was definitely like a person who did not learn to like take advantage of the help I was given. I thought that like I should kind of do it on my own. And then coming here and having so many teachers who were like they wanted to help you and having the other students at like the help centers who were there to like help you know it really like it makes your work better like people like adults in the real world like use I know like peer editing all the time and that's something that like I've really coming to Mercedesburg and having all this support has helped me really appreciate that and to use that myself and then I think the study hall was, which actually runs just through the fall term for ninth graders, as long as you keep your grades, I think above 85, 90. Um, and then, and I, I enjoyed that. I think it helps, you know, at, at, at the beginning because you're getting to live with all your friends. It's easy to get distracted and to not get your work going, <laughs> um, which is, I think, understandable. 
but I think the study hall helped it just you know everyone's there for two hours I definitely got pretty much as long as I didn't like goof off during study hall I got all of my work done during study hall and it's kind of hard to goof off because you've got to be quiet and the teachers there's always a faculty in there to keep you on task Great, thanks. Um, well, we've got a, got a couple like rapid fire questions that I think will be pretty easy to tackle. Um, Dr. Maurer, can you, can you answer uh, this specific question about robotics? Uh, this participant wants to know what competitions our, our robotics students participate in. Yeah, we, we participate in the International RoboCup competition. So RoboCup International is like the Olympics of robotics. It's actually um, the, the big part of that competition happens at the graduate school and adult level, uh, the major competition. And then there's a junior division, which is we, we actually straddle major and junior with one of the uh, competitions we compete in, the Rapidly Manufacturing Challenge, and then also compete in the junior competition. Uh, so in that, it, it, it works a lot like the Olympics where each country gets to send a team. And so we compete in the National Robo Cup competition. If we win our events, then we are fortunate enough to represent the United States at the international event. So it's a very global competition. It is the, the top of robotics and artificial intelligence um, in the world is represented at that competition. And I've been uh, so fortunate to have been a part of it for so long. It's been wonderful to watch our students develop in that program. Thank you, great. Um, another quick question is just whether a student would be able to take two foreign language classes while they're at Mercersburg. Uh, for me? Sure. Yes, yeah, sorry, yeah. I didn't correct that, yeah. It is possible if a student uh, is really passionate about languages and wants to prioritize that, that's fine. Um, it just, usually it will happen after they've completed the graduation requirements in another discipline. And that opens up space in their schedule to be able to take two language classes. I have a student right now in my AP statistics class that's taking um, an advanced level French class, like a post AP French, and then has also started uh, Spanish one this year because uh, he just is interested in it. And so that's a, just a really quick, and, he, and that's his, I think, fourth or fifth language that he's um, been studying actually. So, um, you know, just that's a that's an, just one example that I know of off the bat. So, and we have students that double up in other places too. They might take two sciences or two maths. Um, you'll see that happen a lot in the uh, upper levels um, in, in 11th and 12th grade. Great, thank you. Um, Brett, I've, I've got one, I've got one for you. Um, has it always been easy to, to finish your homework? You touched on this a little bit earlier um, in the allotted study hall time, or have, have you found that you needed to do work in other times of the day? And maybe you can speak to your schedule a little bit here uh, with help periods after lunch and, and just, you know, the workload and how that's been for you. Okay, I think, I think the teachers do a really good job in ninth grade. They know that we're adjusting to a whole new school schedule than we've ever had before. So I think I generally don't need to use time outside of study hall, except for maybe longer projects or papers. But when I do, we have, you know, like Ms. Couch said, we have that help period block after school where you can, or after lunch, where you can do your work or you can go talk to teachers if you need help to do your work. And then additionally, you usually have one free period or two possibly where you can do work or if you, you know, like I play violin, I can go, cause our schedule is pretty busy once we get into the afternoon, I can go to the art center and play violin during that time or pursue something else. Great, thanks. Um, Jack, I've got a question for you. Uh, someone asked about being academically challenged while they're at Mercersburg. And um, I just wonder if you could speak to how you've ensured that you've challenged yourself to your full, full potential and you know, perhaps the work you've done with your advisor to, to come up with your schedule too. Yeah, so um, Mercersburg does a great job of making sure that they find a balance between your academic life, your social life, your extracurricular life and making sure you stay healthy. But academically, um, working with my advisor, um, 
at the end of each year, moving, looking forward on the ne next year. Uh, they look at your priorities, um, your interests, and kind of, uh, they also take into account the comments that your teachers have given you over the past year to ensure that you're in the right levels of courses, that you're um, opening up as many opportunities for yourself. And so um, in ninth grade, moving in, you'll take the placement tests and in the first couple of weeks, there's a lot of, uh, there's a big grace period with getting to know teachers and making sure that you're uh, on the right academic path. And then you can kind of adjust and go from there. Um, and then over the next one or two years, um, as teachers get to know you, uh, you have a lot of flexibility with being able to challenge yourself. Um, in many ways, it's about challenging yourself. Uh, teachers will also make sure that you're being challenged in their classes. Um, and from there, the sky's the limit. I mean, um, Mercersburg has given me a lot. It's challenged me a lot too, for sure. But um, yeah, there's definitely many opportunities you can take academically. And if you want to be challenged, uh, Mercersburg can definitely do that for you. And as far as students are, whether or not they're challenged, the one thing I regret most about having to use this platform to try to explain to us what's achieved academically at Mercersburg is that, you know, each of the last two years, we've been fortunate enough to have a full school on April 10th. And I'm fairly convinced that was because on revisit days, when families came to see what Mercersburg students do, they were amazed by what they're prepared to, to accomplish by the time they're seniors. And so if you could, and, and of course we can't replicate this, attend the end of day fair with students standing with their projects, like a student last year who had built a bomb diffusing robot, designed it, printed it, assembled it, um, programmed it. And th that's a semi exceptional project, but from there, the range across what you see the kids do in their senior year is um, it's not high school, it's high school, but it's not high school. And I, I, again, I, I wish you could see that, um, that we could put that on display for you because I think you'd walk away from, from, this, uh, from this experience thinking, okay, that's the, that's the school I want, I want my kid to go to. And I, I, I think that's the reason why we've been full the last two years on April 10th. Um, you said there was a question about a list of courses for next year. Uh, Anna, what's, uh, what, what's, what specifically? Well, just, um, you know, where, where could people find that? And um, just, you know, what time of year do we put out our list of courses for next year? So I think, you know, there's probably already, well, you've been, you've been working with teachers about some new classes. So. Yeah. Well, registration begins in a couple of weeks. Uh, there will soon be a, uh, a, a, a story on, uh, on the website about the new courses that we're offering. Um, and information about what is offered in each uh, department can be found on the website with uh, on each page with uh, in each department representing each department yeah i think under academics on our website there's a curriculum guide um, but if you have a specific question about courses that are are being offered a specific one please feel free to you know, write to us at the end of this. Um, I will share with all of you, everyone, all the panelists' email addresses, so you'll have a chance to to jot those down if you would like. Um, so let's see. Um, There's some really exciting opportunities for next year. Some new courses, some really cool offerings. So yeah. Yeah, and, and moving away from the from the AP designation, the uh, the imagination of our teachers has been has been. Uh, yeah, it's. It's, it's reaching new heights. And I, th I think as well, the situation we find ourselves in now, where we are in uh, this, uh, we, you know, where you know, distance learning has been thrust upon us to see, I've just been so, so inspired by my colleagues for the last, the last 10 days as they've come up with these incredible solutions um, that, uh, and, and, and they're allowing themselves even now to, to, to move themselves, advance themselves perhaps further than we, we, than we would have. Um, if we weren't thrust into the situation. Yeah, it's, uh, it's our, our faculty finds a way. And, uh, and it's, and uh, I guess what's most heartening to me is to see that most of our conversations are moving away from about teaching and more to about learning. 
And that's, that's the kind of school I'd want my kid to go to. Thanks, John David. I mean, I, I think um, obviously we would be remiss if we didn't recognize the situation we're in right now and um, share with all of our participants that our students did start virtual learning classes last Thursday. And uh, we, we, had, we were supposed to be back from spring break last Monday night for classes on Tuesday. And so our, our teachers have worked around the clock to get their classes up and running um, starting last Thursday. And, uh, you know, one question was about, uh, um, about this COVID-19 pandemic that's forcing all of us around the world to do online learning for the rest of this semester and how, uh, how we feel will uh, best support those students coming to Mercersburg next year, given just the, the different learning setups that they've had this spring. Um, Julie, I don't know if you want to address that and and Margaret, you know, you can certainly jump in and talk about the ways that you're working with students, even from afar right now. Yeah, you know, we have we have always met students where they are. It's a it, it is, a, you know, a hallmark of of our educational experience and next year will be no different. We're going to meet kids where they are and support them with the um, with what they need. And I, I truly believe um, next year when we come back after this and being apart from each other it is i i think it's going to be the most grateful group of, of students you know for us all to be back together and um i miss my kids so much you know i see their faces on the screen and i just really love long to be back in urban uh 403 teaching them um so it but we're but we're making it work we're doing um we, I've, I shot some videos earlier this afternoon to post to my to post to my class, and I had help sessions during we you know um, Greta and Margaret were talking about the help sessions. You know those mean so much to us that we're still doing remote office hours uh, in morning and in the afternoon every day for our students. And so I had um, one pop in there just to make sure she had a quick question, and um, we made sure that she was all squared away on that on that topic. Um, you know, and, and it's uh, being apart, just not seeing them every day, I think is the hardest, but we are still connecting with them um, and making sure that we are delivering the right kind of educational program and content uh, for them and all kinds of really creative ways to John David's point. I mean, it's been amazing what our teachers have, have done and, and the way that we're sharing our solutions with each other. We have a department meeting almost every day where we talk about the things that are working really well so that all of us can have those um that knowledge and those ideas so that if that's helpful yeah and, and i've been uh kind of overseeing the the um the educational technology part of it and since last um since last monday my inbox has been full and when i go back to my inbox after this webinar there'll be 25 new emails from faculty members asking questions about how to do this do that how to make what they're doing better um that's you know it's it's the sort of faculty who will uh uh try new things feel what works feel what doesn't work but they are obsessed with improving the delivery um and it's frankly a joy to answer all those emails Yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate you guys speaking about what's happening right now. Um, I know we only have a couple minutes left here. So, uh, Margaret, I don't know if you wanted to jump in a little bit and, you know, and share that you have still been working with students and um, share anything else that you think is valuable for people to know about learning services at Mercersburg. And then I'll let any of you who, who have closing thoughts to share. Um, I know a lot of participants have asked more questions about um, how the AP will affect college placement and, and those sorts of things. I definitely encourage you to join the outcomes webinar that happens right after this. And if I haven't gotten to your questions, we will uh, send an email out after this and address all of them. So, uh, Margaret, yeah, so I'll take it. If, uh, and to that point about the AP, that's a great question for uh, Mike Conklin, our director of college counseling, because he, he's done a lot of work and um, investigation and talking with colleges about that. Um, and I think they'll be re very reassured to hear um, the answers that he'll have to a question like that. So absolutely, he would be um, uh, very adept at answering all of the questions if there are some. 
and and even as a preview i've i've personally spoken to dozens of schools that have moved away from advanced placement and none of them report their matriculation uh being being damaged being hurt at all thanks all right, Mark. So just quickly, um, I just want to echo what Julie said at the beginning, um, and that is that actually at Mercersburg, we are pretty well versed in meeting students where they are. We have students coming from all over the country, all over the world with different educational backgrounds, different cognitive profiles, um, and we work really well together. Um, you know, I often joke I might be an office of one, but I'm a team of at least 100 um, because I do work really closely with the faculty. I have a team of, you know, seven tutors who can work one-on-one -on -one with students. So if there are any significant gaps, um, just as Julie mentioned earlier, those would probably be picked up in the placement tests and we could be well prepared to meet that student. Um, if things are discovered along the way, then we do what we can to fill in those gaps and to make sure that students are um, given the support that they need through my office, through um, the academic dean's office, through the teachers, the faculty. Um, I've been, you know, a lot of Google hanging out with uh, a lot of students and their families um, since Thursday. And, you know, one thing I've talked about with another prospective family earlier today was just how much of a community we are and faculty are always talking to faculty, which sometimes, you know, students don't like that because they don't get away with a whole lot for too long. Um, but actually, it's just more of a good support system. So if a teacher is recognizing something, They'll run down the hall, they'll you know, give me a call, they'll find me in the dining hall and they'll say, you know, I think something you know, needs to be done about so-and-so and, and can you help that student? And I'll meet with that student one-on-one. -on -one. So I hope that's helpful. Yeah, that's really helpful. Thanks, Margaret. Uh, Jack and Greta, I wanna give you a chance just to, to offer some last words or thoughts here before we close. Uh, just advice that you would give to these students who are trying to make a decision if you have any to offer. Yeah, so uh, it's a bummer that uh, there's no revisit day this, uh, this year, but making the most of it, just think about um, where you could see yourself. Um, think about what you wanna accomplish in high school um, and think about uh, the sort of things that you're going to need um, moving forward. Uh, back to Dr. Maurer's point, uh, the community at Mercersburg is one of the strongest that I've ever felt. Um, and I, I can rest assured and guarantee you that you're gonna wanna be part of that uh, in incoming group that's uh, standing in the chapel together, uh, singing the alma, mat alma mater for the first time. It's, it's gonna be pretty intense and emotional. So uh, thank you for your time. I really enjoyed this. Thanks, Jack. Greta, anything you want to share with the group? Oh, it looks like Greta's frozen there. <laughs> oh, there you are. <laughs> Sorry, my screen keeps glitching out. Okay. Um, I, I think I really agree with everything that Jack said. Just um, where, like, you know, where you feel like you could talk with the enjoy the company of the teachers and the other students and and yeah definitely where you see yourself uh, having opportunities to challenge yourself and opportunities to grow and succeed and yeah <laughs> great thanks um julie john david any last words julie i don't know if you want to to share your screen and share the the video real quickly um oh yeah i can do <laughs> uh, I had, I had some things pulled up in case we wanted to do that. So I will go ahead here. And then everyone will, uh, all the participants, I'll share contact information on the page as soon as uh, the video is done. And then uh, we can jump to the, the next panel in 10 minutes. All right, can you guys see that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so there is Victor. And this video is going to show first, um, He's going to turn the light on just by thinking about it. That was his first step. And so when he breaks his concentration, the light will turn off. And then once he was able to master that, he figured watch the brain waves on the side when it turns red, that's when he's thinking move forward. And so he was able to uh, have his computer 
analyzes brain waves, find the pattern that when he would think move forward and translate that into code to move his robot just by thinking about it. That's awesome. And, and if we if we could have a live revisit day, you would see a lot of projects like that. Just like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to I want to thank our panelists for spending their evening uh, with us here tonight and I'll um, put their contact information up um, so you can see and let me see here. Yeah. We are um, happy to respond to any questions over email that we weren't able to oh, get to in 45 minutes. So please send them my way. Great. Well, thanks again, everyone, for, for joining us this evening or, or uh, the morning for you. I know uh, we're seeing some people from, from Hong Kong and around the world. Um, so thanks again, and uh, hope to see you in, in 10 minutes uh, very shortly for our next webinar. Thanks. Thank you. Come to Mercersburg. Thank you, Anna. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye.